Luffy's powers started with him just having a rubbery body and being able to stretch, which is already crazy enough because Luffy from the get-go was able to do things that were completely out of the ordinary, things that we didn't really get in any other shounen manga at the time. Oda chose this ability for Luffy because it allowed him to run wild with his imagination. Luffy stretched and fought in creative and unusual ways to the point that even his opponents thought he was mocking them and wasn't taking them seriously. But that is just how Luffy fights because he is supposed to be a silly ridiculous character but also serious at the same time. And the gears were introduced into the story to amplify this aspect of Luffy's character. It did make Luffy stronger and faster like any other shounen transformation, but more importantly, his fighting style became even more aligned with his playful and unpredictable nature as he unlocked and transformed into each new gear. So in today's video, we will be explaining each one of Luffy's gears, going from gear second, which was first shown in Ennis Lobby, all the way to gear fifth, Luffy's peak. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this type of content. So, the first gear we have is Gear Second. Luffy developed this technique after having fought Aokiji. He realized how weak he was and that he needed to become stronger. Luffy therefore came up with Gear Second, which greatly enhances his physical capabilities and also makes him faster. I'm actually very impressed that Luffy even managed to come up with this technique, but knowing Luffy, I am pretty sure he doesn't understand how it actually works. Gear second basically increases the speed of his blood flow and thanks to the rubber nature of his blood vessels and organs, his body can withstand the pressure. This allows more oxygen and nutrients to be pumped throughout his body. And since that is the case, this leads to a temporary increase in muscle size known as muscle pump, giving him an extreme boost in strength and speed, but these effects are not permanent. This much amount of sudden change to his body does cause long-term damage, causing his lifespan to shorten. But after the time skip, Luffy has gotten so used to using Gear Second that it no longer causes much stress on his body, thus minimizing its impact on his lifespan and he is also now able to activate Gear Second using any parts of his body. Previously, he could only activate it by pumping the blood through his legs to then extend the effect throughout his entire body. But now he can start pumping his blood with any parts of his body. Now let's move on to gear third. I think this transformation is more of a complementary technique because Luffy often uses it alongside gear second combining the two. This transformation is purely for more strength. Luffy blows up the bones inside his body making it gigantic. The downside of this transformation is that it is super slow but it does pack a great punch and it is more fit to be used as a finishing blow. The downside of gear third is that it used to temporarily shrink Luffy to the size of a child. But after the time skip, Oda decided to just take that out of the story and when someone asked him why, his answer was, and I quote, it is because Luffy has better control on this technique. Luffy has been training with Rayleigh for two years, so he has a better control on gear second and gear third. So the answer is that Luffy has simply improved his mastery over gear third, preventing that issue from occurring anymore. A classic anime logic for you. But anyways, time to move on to Gear 4 and this is the most ridiculous looking transformation Luffy has. Even Doflamingo laughed the first time he saw it. <laughs> to activate Gear 4, Luffy has to blow up his muscles. Gear 4 primarily works on his muscular system and Gear 4 may look ridiculous but it is one of his strongest transformation and he has three different forms in Gear 4. 
both. The one we are most familiar with, because it is the one that Luffy uses all the time, is Boundman. In this form, Luffy is like a huge rubber ball. What makes this form so powerful is that Luffy is able to retract his legs and arms inside his rubber body, unleashing blows of devastating power. And it also allows him to fly if he does it fast enough with his legs. And in Gear 4, Luffy covers his entire legs and arms with armament Haki, increasing his endurance but also strength. The second form of Gear 4 is Tank Man. What is interesting about Tank Man is that a lot of people dismiss this form saying it is not a real form of Gear 4 because we've only seen Luffy use it once in the manga and never again and it didn't get a cool introduction like the other forms did. But what is even more problematic is that when Luffy uses it in Hawk Cake Island, he has just eaten so he is stuffed. So we've actually never seen what Tankman looks like with Luffy's normal body and we've only seen him do one attack with it. Normally swords or spears are able to pierce Luffy's body but in Tankman this does not happen. Luffy is able to absorb any attacks inside his body it seems and throw it back out blasting away his opponents. This explains why it is called Tank man, since he can tank any attacks with this form. I think it's more of a defensive form, which is why Luffy hasn't used it anymore. His style leans more towards offense than defense. And the final form of Gear 4 is Snake Man. Snake Man allows Luffy to focus purely on speed and agility. The main trick of this form is that Luffy can change the trajectory of his punches, making it extremely difficult to tell where they are coming from catching his opponents by surprise. But all these forms are essentially the same, combining Armament Haki to his robbery body and they are all used differently. And now last but certainly not least is Gear 5. And this is the pinnacle of Luffy's abilities. To activate Gear 5, Luffy has to pump up his heart to make the beat of the drums of liberation. And Luffy takes on a more cartoonish fighting style as well as being able to grant the environment around him the same proper as Robber. Gear 5 is basically the awakened form of Luffy's Devil Fruit, turning him into a literal cartoon character since his Devil Fruit is actually the Sun God Nika's powers. This transformation is so strong that it is only limited by the user's imagination, meaning Luffy can technically pretty much do anything he wants in this transformation. We've seen him conjure objects out of thin air, We've seen him be able to fly and turn his opponents into rubber. And it is thanks to this transformation that we are now aware that Luffy's Devil Fruit is a Zoan type, not a Paramecia, because Zoan Devil Fruits contain a will of their own. They have the will of whatever animal, or in this case deity, is sealed inside of them. And in the One Piece world, since people worshipped and believed in the sun god Nika, the warrior of liberation, it manifested a will of its own. And became this devil fruit. Gear 5 is actually very similar to Sengoku's devil fruit, not in terms of abilities but in what they both represent. Sengoku ate the mythical zone type devil fruit model Buddha, another deity that is sealed inside his devil fruit just like the sun god Nika is sealed inside Luffy's fruit. Luffy named this transformation Gear 5 to go along with the names of his other transformation but it is in in fact, just the awakened version of his devil fruit. So, from starting the story with Luffy simply being able to stretch and repel bullets to him becoming a literal god, Luffy has sure come a long way with his devil fruit and has come up with new transformation that a lot of us would have never imagined. This is why this devil fruit chose him, because he is silly and creative enough to utilize this devil fruit to its full potential.